Curator has some data structures called reference sets, which are just not, nothing more than a fancy name for uh, some list that has an optional time to live. Let me explain what that is all about. So here you can have a list where you can put host name, IP address, you know, whatever data you want to put in there. And you can optionally specify uh, after a week, this element after being put on, on the list uh, for a week, after a week it drops out of the list automatically. What we can do with it? For example, with any identity management system, no, no, no has to be, it doesn't have to be only with ours, you can get a baseline of users. And how do you get the baseline of user? Well, baseline of user is which are the guys who normally go to this application. My identity management can tell me how many people have access to it. That's a different answer. I want just the guys who normally go in here because one of the things that APTs do is, you know, they they can reset a password or get into uh, impersonate somebody else and go into an application uh, that that is sensitive and normally this person doesn't normally go there. How do I create that baseline? Well, you can put a rule in Curator that reads, if anyone has a successful login, and that's a building block that we know what successful login are, you don't have to worry about that, into this sensitive application, and that sensitive application can be uh, a safe search or, uh, or a particular host. Uh, and uh, the, the, so the guy has a successful login to that application, take the user ID, and remember that we get the user ID from the, from the queue flows, Take the user ID and put it into this list and start populating this list and then you let this rule run for three months to accommodate for vacation. After that, you disable the rule and now that rule created for you a curated list of baseline users. Now you can use that into uh, a more sophisticated rule that says if anyone attempts to log in and that's a building block that we know what that is into this sensitive application and it's not in my baseline user list Fire an offense because that's a new guy I want to investigate what the guy is doing. Another example could be for, for reference sets, uh, fresh passwords. When anyone reset their password into, uh, say, Active Directory password, Curator knows about it. We get the, 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 the Active Directory logs, oh, password reset, take the user ID, boom, put it into a list of fresh password with an option with a time to leave of one week. So after one week, we don't consider the password fresh. What is that useful? Because again, APTs like to reset password or people can compromise somebody else's password by uh, answering the challenge response question and get their, 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 their good guy uh, password reset. Then when the good guy go, goes back and tries to log in, he has to reset his password again because the bad guy uh, did it and, and look at the information. So, so we can use that and then have a very simple rule that said if somebody reset their password and is in the list of fresh password, meaning that that password was changed less than a week ago, investigate that one because either the guy is losing his memory or, or, or somebody uh, hacked them. Curator also has a very useful RESTful API. That is bidirectional, they get access to the asset database and many other things. You can look for offenses and many other data. And one of the things that you can do is from any identity management system, ours or any, anybody else that you have, you can get what is called a map, which is just the, you know something that maps the name of, of a particular person and the user IDs that he has because you know curator sees the user id and the logs will produce just user id information on log and flows so you only get the user id not the real name so what you can do is that use the capability in curator for advanced sql searches that we can do we can do as sophisticated you know you are not, are not limited to the nice searches that we have in the ui you can do very sophisticated sql searches and then answers the question for example show me everything that jim did between this and that time and, and Jim, we, we take the, you know, whatever, Gene Forlan, and then we look in Gene Forlan, all the user IDs that Gene Forlan has, and then we perform a search based on those user IDs, and we can answer that question very easily. Another ref you could use for the reference sets can be, for example, a list that you can create with the about to leave people. Let's say that you, you know that the people that are about to leave, or your identity management knows it, or you get a way of via the RESTful API, or manually if you want to, you can populate those uh, references manually, and you can put those names of those guys uh, uh, into that reference set. And then you have rules that fire, for example, on the number of records. If uh, anyone 
that is in this particular list touches more than 40 records a day, eh, investigate that because it's not nobody should be doing that is about to leave should be looking all that information. If it's, for example, using FTP traffic, hmm, then maybe he's downloading some stuff. Take a look at it. If he's, you know, communicating and, and, and sending stuff to Google Drive or Dropbox or any one of those, uh, let's, let's investigate those. So those are a few examples of those uh, references. Very useful uh, in, in helping uh, the detect things and facilitate the automation. Let's talk a little bit about another, com yet another component that Curator has. It's called the Forensic module and this allows you to do very sophisticated forensic without having to have a geek that you know looks at the shark type of tool and look at the type of protocols and without having a week having to invest a week which is normally what it takes a geek and a week to do a forensic investigation in curator now you can just if you have the authority to do so you can just right click on whatever ip and solicit uh, 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 if you have the forensic module installed, of course, and solicit a full forensic, and then you see pages that the guy visited and, and where he clicked on the pages, uh, chat, uh, email, uh, voice over IP, if you have the legal right to do so, everything that went, videos, everything that went to the network, we actually get to actually see it. And you can reproduce those and, and produce a case that you can use it to fire the guy or prosecute it or whatever you want to wanna do with that data. Curator has a distributed architecture that has made it very, very uh, capable. We, we don't know an upper limit of, we don't have, we have very large users using Curator and, and none of them has to reach a limit. Why? Because you can start using Curator with all in one appliance where you have all the components, the event processor, event collector, all that. And, or you can, um, uh, as you grow, you can then go into a distributed architecture and say, well, I'm going to have some uh, here, I'm going to have just a console one or many consoles, and I'm going to have some uh, 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 event collectors for collecting all the logs, and those may feed into an event processor. Let me write that down here, event processor. And then you have the event collector here, and then they say that you need more event collector, or you have some that are distributed on the network. You can, you know, add more, of course. And, and same thing with the flows. You may have, you know, some flow collectors. And uh, they may feed into a flow processor. I'm going to explain a little bit more about this in a minute. And it's not that we, we send all that information into the console, like all the system, and that they, they become a bottleneck. No, every one of those devices, when you perform, for example, a search, it knows where to look uh, for, the, for the actual data, even though the results are shown on the console, not all the data has to actually go into, into the particular console. So the, those event processors and flow processors, they do the correlation of all those nice rules and all that intelligence that Curator uh, uh, so well does. And they perform also storage of the of the data, and they are the engines that perform the searches when you order from the console to perform a search. However, we figured that you know when people want to do many searches and they want to have very fast response time on searches, for that we created what is called the data nodes. The data nodes, it's you know aside. Uh, side by side by the flow processor or the uh, event uh, processors and what we do is that we can take out either completely or, or, or share the, the, the responsibility and allow the data node to do all the functions of storage and searches so whenever you are doing a search you have all this the CPU memory and storage of that particular appliance, physical or virtual, uh, to perform those searches. And, and the beauty of those uh, uh, data nodes is that they, they, they don't require a license. You, you need to pay, for, or if you put a, a, a virtual device, then you're good with that. And, and, and the benefit of it is that our searches have improved Look at this, 100 times. We do searches are 100 times faster when we involve uh, those uh, data nodes.